All right. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for attending. Today, I'm going to talk about the UI Elements Render. This talk is titled Built for Performance, the UI Elements Render. My name is Wissam, and I'm the tech lead for Unity's Editor Rendering Technology and UI. Now, before I uh, introduce you to uh, the details of the UI Elements Render, I would like to first familiarize you with uh, the problem that we have to solve in the first hand. So the UI rendering problem, it's a particular rendering problem that have certain characteristics compared to other rendering problems that we face uh, in a daily manner. Uh, basically, we have to deal with a big tree of nested elements. They are supposed to be uh, visited in a depth first um, order for rendering and uh, achieving proper composition. UI systems are usually stateful systems where your controls usually hold different states, be it the text of a label, the state of a checkbox, uh, a button, whether it is pressed, and so on and so forth. Most of the controls are static with sometimes very localized changes that happen and they're instigated usually by user input. So for example, your mouse is hovering over a button. You have changes ha happening just around that area, but pretty much the rest of the panel remains stationary. And finally, um, if you want to render the contents of your UI, you usually involve a number of different techniques. So basically, you have to render probably solid um, shapes, uh, maybe textured text, and uh, even some uh, other constructs like borders. Um, and we can say, OK, I mean, it's not a big deal. We can render that stuff straight out if we, uh, for example, start visiting the um, visual tree every frame uh, in depth first uh, order. We ask each element to draw itself so it uh, determines what is the material that uh, needs to be used to, to draw itself, um, generates um, the vertices needed according to its layout, and then issues a draw call. And then you rinse and repeat for each uh, element in, the, in your tree. This is all cool. And uh, this is, by the way, called uh, immediate mode uh, rendering. And this is how IAM GUI currently operates in Unity. Uh, turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not the way to draw actual UI render. render um, that's not the way you, you should render UI, at least not in a scalable manner. What's the problem here is that we have useless work that has been repeated every frame. And if we stick to that methodology, for us, the developers in Unity, it's difficult to actually optimize behind that method. Uh, we can do some tricks here and there, but in the end, it still can't actually reach the potential performance that you would like to have. So that's why with this methodology, it is not performance scalable. And in the docs, if you read about IAM GUI, you will notice that we recommend to you only use that for uh, debugging purposes and not for production. And if you really don't believe me, then please stick out to the rest of this talk, and you will see the reasons why. Now, in order to do a scalable UI render, what you would like to, you, to do is to actually benefit from the problem's characteristics. And as we've said before, you would like to deal with those spare updates and only recompute depending on what has really changed. Ideally, you would pay zero cost when nothing has changed, and also try to achieve minimal cost every frame when you want to render that thing on the frame, on the screen. Uh, this, as I said, is not achievable with the current IAM GUI methodology, so we need something different. And this is where UI Elements comes in. Um, UI Elements is now the upcoming universal UI system for Unity, and it covers not only the editor aspect, but also work in progress uh, player uh, coverage. It is fundamentally different from IAM GUI that it is retained, and we use that fact to build a new render that actually benefits from this advantage. So UI Elements Render, or UIR for short, is the new uh, rendering backend for UI Elements. And it is being built by a tiny team. Uh, they're on the quest for best UI rendering performance. We have to work to support all the UI Elements features, basically all the uh, cascading style uh, sheets properties that are uh, supported by it. We need uh, to support uh, SVG, vector graphics, uh, at, at infinite zoom levels. Uh, be able to deal with trees made out of thousands of elements and in the end run all of this on all platforms that Unity supports, of course. All of that at great performance. So sounds like a challenge, but our team likes to take that kind of challenge. So uh, we have put to ourselves a couple of goals, mainly to keep the CPU and the GPU happy. 
performance-wise. So if we put those goals in front of, um, in front of us, uh, some of them please the CPU, some of them work well with the GPU, but if you look closely to them, you will notice that they are actually conflicting sometimes. And this is a problem, because you can't actually achieve and win on all uh, sides here. So you have to pick, uh, to pick your battle and make compromises. Now the game becomes to actually what compromises you want, want to do. So let's look at what we can do here. If we want to optimize material and state changes across uh, the rendering of the tree, we have, as we said, we have to deal with those different shaders, and each element can, ha can have its own different properties as well, and color, opacity, whatever. But the problem is that those state changes are actually very expensive, so we'd, we'd really want to run away from those. The cost is not just on the CPU, but also the GPU pays uh, at all for that uh, kind of change. So let's aim to avoid state changes entirely. And this is where we introduce the UIR Uber shader. It's right now encompassed in this uh, header that I have here. And um, it can handle pretty much most of the content that, can, uh, that UI elements comes across right now. We have the two main functions um, in the shader, uh, the vertex and the fragment shader. And if you look at them, uh, they're actually quite complex and uh, big functions. But UI is historically a fill rate bound um, situation, meaning you will be actually busy on your uh, pixel processing units, but your vertex processing unit will be sitting idle. We can actually use this fact and move much of the computations for state changes and, pro and processing that from the CPU into the vertex processor. And actually, nothing will surface in the end in your profiler because this time was being spent idle anyways. So the vertex shader process processes most of the uh, pro complexity here. Now, if you look at the pixel shader that we have, it actually also has dynamic branching. And we know that dynamic branching can be expensive. But we also know that all the pixels that we generate from the same element, they usually follow the same conditions anyways. So we don't have branching across um, a single wave front or warp. That happens very rarely. So the cost for the expensive part of dynamic branching is actually not going to be hit. The trick that we're playing here is that we balance the work across your processing units. So between the CPU and the GPU, and within the GPU itself, between the vertex processing units and the pixel processing units. So we have uh, the situation solved with the material, but what about the element properties? Because each element can have its own uh, unique properties. So what we do, we have, well, you have your usual uh, atlas here, which takes all the different textures that you can prob probably have assigned on your elements. They are crammed in a single atlas for you automatically. But also, we take uh, per element data, su such as their transforms, um, their opacities, and we actually also stash those in an atlas, as you can see in the bottom. So that is one part solved. Now, if we want to optimize draw call count, so state changes by themselves, they are not enough to solve the situation here. You still need to guarantee that all your geometry is actually sequential in a single index and vertex buffer in order to be able to draw, to submit one single continuous draw call across everything. In fact, IAM GUI already does that. As it is drawing its elements, it actually fills up a dynamic VBO uh, sequentially. And, but uh, the only difference is that, unfortunately, they don't benefit from this because they keep changing uh, the materials across. But we don't even want that. The, in I'm GUI's case, that buffer is regenerated every frame. We want to actually just generate that thing once and maintain it across the frames. So let's allocate one big, large VB and IB index buffer. And we start emplacing your elements into those buffers. If we, for example, do this, we keep a counter on the last uh, vertex or index that has been filled. And as new elements come in, we just accumulate them. Then it's all good and easy. And you can fill additional elements without touching the previous ones. But now the question is, what happens if elements, existing elements, got removed, or their state changes, and you need to regenerate their geometry? Well, this simple approach of just keeping a counter doesn't work anymore. And this is where we have to introduce the GPU allocators. So UIR has a couple of allocators. They're specialized ones, kind of similar to what you would see in C++ land, but these are targeted towards managing the GPU memory. 
What they, want, what they do differently uh, than a regular allocator is that they guarantee sequentiality of the geometry in uh, those buffers, such that at any time you can actually draw from the beginning to the end of the buffer without breaking your draw calls. And you can actually update data there, and you don't need uh, to do any double buffering. So it keeps track of what, par uh, what portions of that buffer is being used by the GPU at a certain time. And if you need uh, to update, it will give you another region and then defragment behind your back. So the end result of this is that we have something like this tree, which actually involves pretty much all the, the constructs that we can uh, ever face in UI elements right now. So we have uh, solid shapes, uh, textured shapes, we have text and uh, vector graphics elements. All of this is right now being drawn in one draw call. These are about 185 visual elements, resulting in about 4,000 triangles. And this is a screenshot of the same thing in render doc, and this is showing it to you in wireframe, it's all in one draw call. So that makes some people proud. <laughs> so now that you know how uh, UIR handles its geometry, I just thought it, uh, I'd mention this new API that we have exposed. It's called Generate Visual, uh, Visual Content. It's a property on the visual element. And what I want you to know from this is as you get to call um, allocate from this uh, callback, what you will be handed is actually a native array in C Sharp that is actually mapped on GPU mapped memory directly. So that means whatever you write is actually going to be immediately um, visible by the GPU. And this is because we would like to avoid mem copying data around as much as possible. And hopefully from this, you can also understand some of the reasoning behind the way that API is laid out, because it allows you only to write um, without reading and in a sequential manner. Um, and then this data gets in, uh, wrapped by a macro uh, render command that is put in a render command list that is iterated every frame. So what we have uh, so far is one material able to express all UI constructs, a single vertex and index buffer to hold the geometry, resulting in one draw call to rule them all. And this allows us to achieve the theoretical minimum cost for drawing. Even if your visual tree is 1,000 elements, we just always pay a, uh, a, stat, uh, like a specific cost irrelevant of the tree size at render time. We also keep a uh, close um, eye on the changes that are happening on the visual tree and respond to those in a linear manner. So the amount of changes that you incur in the tree, you will pay a cost linearly to that uh, amount of change, not more. So that's all great, but there is more features that we actually support in UIR. We have GPU accelerated clipping, so we do rectangular clipping. We also achieve arbitrary shaped clipping, all without breaking your draw calls. We use GPU skinning to move around your elements, and we will know more about this uh, shortly. And we also do GPU accelerated viewport operations, and this is uh, a required feature from some of our customers. So if you want to optimize with UIR, we wanted uh, to ensure that you don't uh, have to do structural tree changes in order to optimize. So you don't have to wrap your panel with another panel or move elements from one side, from one part of the tree to another in order to optimize. We want you to keep that tree to the state that makes most sense to the designers, but still be able to actually hint the system onto how to optimize, uh, optimize that. So we use um, an API called the usage hints. It's basically a property that you put on each visual element. And it basically allows you co to communicate your high-level intentions behind uh, that element. And what UIR will do is it will take those hints and try to in, uh, like rework its internals accordingly. Of course, you don't want to just take those hints and splash them on the entire tree, because there is a cost. There is an optimization. Uh, there is a, a, a certain amount of resources allowed for those optimizations, and you will be actually churning through them very quickly. So we'd want to actually keep those hints on what really matters uh, the most for you. So as an example of what proper usage hint uh, can do for you, let's look at this graph here. So we have a visual tree of uh, 6,000 elements. They're generating about 200,000 uh, triangles here. And we're taking all those elements and moving them around. Without usage hints, 
it would take actually 163 milliseconds to actually do this uh, operation. It's a very expensive price. If you put the proper usage hints on those elements, then that cost drops right from 163 to 11.4 milliseconds, so about four times the speed up. So since we're talking about performance, let me show you um, one more example of UIR in action. So this is a snapshot of a VFX graph. It's uh, full of widgets and text and colors and edges. And this is what we have. If we render that graph with an immediate rendering backend, it would take about 18 milliseconds. With UIR, this cost goes down to 2.4 milliseconds, exactly the same output. In fact, actually, it is 0.5 milliseconds for UIR because there are still some elements in that uh, visual tree that are using the immediate render, and we couldn't actually uh, get rid of and um, move them to the new render in time. So, of course, this is a, a great speed up. It wasn't easy work, and lots of uh, thoughts and sweat were put behind the techniques uh, I touched upon here. But I think the results uh, are worth it. So, where do we go from here? I mean, uh, we have still lots of work ahead of us. UIR is still under heavy development, but we have big plans for it. We want to implement uh, anti-aliasing without hardware MSAA. We want to integrate with a 3D world. So in both directions, you have 3D content in your uh, panels, or you have your panel in a 3D world. Uh, we want to expose new usage hints to guide performance even better, allow you to uh, uh, bring in your custom materials. And we would like to implement a new expert system tool for UIR profiling and optimization that would tell you, like, OK, here you have a performance problem. You can do this and give you suggestions, and much more. So that's it uh, for me. I would like to thank you on behalf of uh, the UIR team. And please uh, make sure you attend those talks for further information on UI elements. Thank you.